Uh, first, a word about myself. I am the CEO of Wind Research since last spring. And prior to that, I have been in drug development since I graduated as a pharmacist. I started with the American company at MSC Sweden and had the opportunity to also work in the headquarters and, and later on in Europe as well. It was a fantastic learning uh, and I stayed there for more than 20 years. Then I moved to Index Pharmaceuticals. It's a very small, uh, compared to Merck, a very small company uh, based on the Karolinska Institute campus and there was the chief operating officer. And I left the company after 10 years, and at that stage we had uh, achieved the first patient in, in our phase three program. So with this I could say that clinical development is dear to my heart, and therefore I also think it's very exciting to talk about wind research now. And here is this. We are listed on Spotlight. So this is our disclaimer, and this is for information. The key messages that I would like you to, uh, to remember when you think of WINT. We have a substance FOXY5. It's in clinical development in phase two. And the studies is done in patients who have colon cancer. And um, we are targeting stage two and three, and I will talk a little bit more about this in a second. And if you look at the market potential, there's actually, if we um, target 56,000 patients, that could be a yield a yearly revenue of more than 500 million US dollars. And this is, in one way, a small segment. Uh, we have ad hoc analysis, and we just heard um, that it's important to have some kind of data, and this is some kind of data. So we had those observations last, uh, last fall, and it, it shows that um, we, a FOXY5 can have actually um, an effect on the primary tumor. And that is, uh, we are preventing metastasis, but it's starting with the tumor. And we could see uh, both the behavior of the tumor and the downstaging of the disease. Uh, it's also have a very good safety profile, which is very important. Um, the revised study design I will show you because as you do clinical development, as you learn more, you need to adapt to reality. And therefore, we have now amended the study. And this means we will have a shorter readout. And, um, and it will be um, enhance the patients to participate in the study as well. And remember also that we are a small, small company, and we are focusing on colon cancer. But that doesn't say that FOXY5 cannot be treated. There are other oppo opportunities in other cancer types. So now I will go into more details about those. Oops. Cancer and the preventing the metastatic process. It's, it is a little bit of complicated, but I usually think of it as this dandelion. And you have all seen a bloom dandelion with a lot of seeds still with the flower. And then just a little wind can spread the seeds, and then you get a lot of dandelions in, perhaps, your garden. And this is what we're trying to prevent. So every year, more than one million people are diagnosed with colon cancer. Sometimes you see figures including rectal cancer as well. And colon is, is the lower part of our digestive. And if you are diagnosed, or if a patient is diagnosed with this disease, it's not very aggr aggressive. After five years, 70% of the patients are still alive. However, if, if there is metastasis, which, is, which means that you have the cancer in other parts of the body, uh, then it's only 14% that is still alive after, 40, uh, after five years. So preventing the metastasis is really important to prevent death and, and relapse in the disease. Um, of those 1.1 million patients that have colon cancer, there are 274,000 that have stage 2 and 3, where we are focusing the study on. And if then we target approximately 20%, you shouldn't think that all patients can be treated with your drug. Uh, that will mean this figure that I just mentioned, more than 500 million US dollar. So I'm saying that FOXY5 is doing something, and this is what we have seen. So we have seen in vitro and in vivo um, results. And the, how the 
WIN5A is a protein that we have, uh, that a tumor can have. And if there is a high expression of this tumor, uh, the, the WIN5A, uh, the cancer cells tend to adhere to the tumor and they are not migrating to other parts of the body. But if there is a low expression of this uh, WIN5A, this protein, um, then, then the cancer cells spread much more. And we're trying to illustrate it with the flowered dandelion beneath. You can't give WIN5A, it's a too large of a protein and it adhere to surrounding tissues. But the peptide FOXY5 is a smaller molecule. And, and when we give that, we actually mimic the effect of WIN5A. So we have seen in, in vivo and in vitro results. And this means that you look in cells and you look in animal studies that you are required to do also uh, down the road when you are developing your drug. So we have seen that when we add FOXY5, the cancer cells behave as if there were a high expression of WIND5A. And we can also see that in the animals when you look at metastasis and the formation. And it has seen in lung, in liver, and, and, uh, and also in the local lymph nodes. And we have seen indicating that if you look at some biomark, some special, uh, special substance you can measure, uh, that it actually has some effect on stem cells. And stem cells are sleeping cells. This is super interesting, still need to be investigated a lot. Uh, and we have also seen that it it's, it's can affect the size of the tumor. But it's good to have a peptide, a FOXY5, that you can be, give, but before you move into clinical development, there are certain things that you have to, to do. And we have to do toxicology studies showing that uh, it, you can give the uh, substance safely to patients. You, can, you also have to have it in a, in a formulation that is possible to give. You can't just have a, a substance, I mean a tablet or, or, or something else. And we have an, an infusion. So the patients are getting, it takes five, uh, 15 minutes for the patients to get it. So in Sweden we would say like a drop. And we are manufacturing this according to good manufacturing practice, as you should, and you have to when you give it to patients. And we have done two phase one studies to see how the FOXY5 is spread in the body, doses and, and similar things. And then we also saw that we could move uh, to clinical studies. And we are now in this clinical phase two development. And this is a lot of text, but I really want to show that we are doing this study in what's called neoadjuvant treatment now. And neoadjuvant treatment is pre-surgery. So all patients, when, when they are diagnosed, they always get surgery and remove, and remove uh, the tumor, because that's, that's, that's the most effic uh, efficacious way of treating this. They are then randomized to the study and get either treatment with FOXY5 or in the control group. And it's randomized, it's called. And then um, they have the surgery and they have a follow-up visit after, after uh, 28 days. That's what you do in, in development after last uh, treatment. And we're looking at the safety, toler tolerability, and then at, at surgery, we're looking at the efficacy of the tumor, uh, of FOXY5 on the tumor, the primary tumor. So we are looking with CT scans and with pathology reports. Sorry. Here we are. So those ad hoc observations. What are ad hoc? It means that they were not planned. It was one of the investigators who told my colleague, I've seen this with FOXY5. I've never seen that in a patient before. And she, my colleague, she is a very experienced person and she picked this up. And then we started to see what does this really mean. And we actually received uh, reports from 110 patients. We had 127 in the study. And then when we were doing the analysis, we could see that the patients that were treated with FOXY5 compared to the control group there were more patients that could show perineural invasion and perivascular invasion and, and TNM staging. It's a little bit complicated, but this is how you really look at efficacy. This was fantastic news. 
And we also saw still uh, that FOXY5 have a favorable safety profile. And this is our professor, Tommy Andersson. He's been with the company since it was uh, founded. And, uh, and to see results in patients, that is fantastic. So uh, those are positive uh, observations, and we have adapted the study. It was originally planned to look for follow-up and death. But this is, a post, uh, this is a proof of concept study, and now we're looking at the primary tumor. And we are also increasing the dose. And the dose escalation is, is thanks to what we have seen, our previous history in animal study, and I think you should always take the advantage, if you can, to see if your drug has the possibility to even show an even better efficacy. So we are increasing the dose in two steps. This is just a few patients uh, in each step. There are two steps. I think that is very important, so you don't have to do that down the road later on. And we can look at other cancer types. And then we have a very experienced board, uh, management team, and also very good investigate, uh, um, um, advisors. So with this, we have to look at partners. We just heard how important it is for small company. And we are doing the best we can with, uh, with the development of Foxy5. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I am sure Kim will start with a question. He was scribbling furiously. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, I'm curious to see you're, you're starting with the dose escalations and, uh, and hopefully it will show, uh, will you get some, uh, some um, signs of if it actually is better, working better with a higher dose or what, what kind of results might, mm -hmm. might come from that? First, you look at the safety to see that you, you can increase the steps. And it's just going to be a few patients. So if it was really a true efficacy, then we wouldn't need uh, 80 patients in the study. Mm -hmm. But it can give an indication. All right. So perhaps we'll get some signs. And then what will the next step be after that? So when we've done the dose escalation, uh, dose selection, that will come spring. I would think then we are randomizing another 80 patients approximately based on, on some of those results to the study. And how, what's the timeline for all of this? What I've said is that we, basing on what we have done so far, so we have those 127 patients, and the, the sites, the clinics, so we have 16 clinics in, in Spain and six, 16 in Spain and 16 in Hungary, and a few more coming on. So when they start, we can do a, a true, a, true ex um um, assessment of when the study could be done, but when looking at it now, it should be during 2025. That's what I said. I don't want to promise because I know everyone is eager. Mm. We should remember that this is based also on pandemic data and the fact that the, the patient was supposed to be in a two-year study. So I do think there are many parameters that could um, yield um, a faster recruitment, but I need to get back with details. And uh, looking at the results that you've received so far, what kind of position will you be able to take in, the, in, in this uh, specific indication compared to the other treatments that are out there? Where do you fit in in the big treatment landscape? Do you mean with the study results of this? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh. With the so we will get results. proof of, of concept that FOXY5 is, is doing something very early on in the metastatic process as we're looking at the tumor when it's been treated for a short time, but we can also see difference. So then it's preventing the metastatic process that is, that is still the target. So in the phase three studies, could be neoadjuvant treatment, but it could also be, and that depends on a partner you have, because we could have a development plan, but that partner might have other ideas what, where they would like to go. So it, I could see that there is, is an opportunity, those stage two and three patients in particular. So, I mean, uh, could you make some of the bigger uh, drugs used today redundant, or what are we looking at here? <laughs> no, that would be fantastic. I think that would be a little too, um, uh, too much to say, but of course we hope that this would be great. And I, I think with those ad hoc uh, observations that we have, to see something early in, in the development indicating efficacy, that's, that's a good sign, but uh, the future will tell. 
and these new um, uh, these new results, uh, you're looking at a shorter timetable compared to what the mm -hmm. what, what the study was. Uh, yeah. So from pre the beginning? previously, the idea was that you treat the patients uh, prior to surgery exactly like I was just showing, but then also um, to continue with another two months or so before other like chemotherapy is, is uh, starting with the patients. And then we were to follow up for another two years to see the outcome. And two years seems sometimes now when you look at other studies and what you look at what the agency says, they require a longer time frame for follow up. If you are really showing death and relapses, mm. it, it could be even three or five years that they require. Okay, okay. So this means that now we can show the proof of concept at surgery. Mm. Uh, and, and that shows there. that, and start there. And okay. then, of course, the next development uh, will have those parameters. We have to have them, hmm. I'm yeah. sure, yeah. Uh, to get onto the market. Thank you. We had a question there. Well, you touched on it just now, but um, I could well think that this drug works in diminishing the metastasis and there is always a lag time between di diagnosis and op operation and other treatment. And it can well work in other cancer, uh, but colorectal cancer. The problem is to quantify the effect. That's your main problem in, <laughs> in selling this product to partners or to anyone else. And I hope that the study will, and I trust the study, we are designing the study now based on the ad hoc observations. And the patients, I mean, the tumor is removed, so the spread of the cancer um, has started when, when you're looking. I think that's what you're, you're leaning towards. And, but the tumor is, is removed. So we are, we are affecting the tumor, and, and then we are also looking at cancer cell, at treating cancer cells that can have can be in the system already while we treat for this three to four weeks. So again, in, in most countries, you, you should have your di uh, surgery as soon as you are diagnosed. Usually it should take two weeks, but most countries it doesn't. It takes a month, it could take six weeks. And, and this is the treatment period so that we can see efficacy on the primary um, tumor prior to, to the surgery. One more question over there. Okay. Um, really interesting to look at what you have are accomplishing and how the drug is developing. Um, it is a small peptide drug, as I'm understanding it, and the the markets are really developing a lot of biologicals, mostly antibodies, as far as I'm aware. Um, my question is, how like what's the production cost, and how does the production cost of this Foxy Five small peptide compare to the production of large? I assume um, this is smaller than an antibody. So how does it compare to like other biologicals uh, in in the terms of production cost? I haven't done um, analysis of what all those biologic uh, drugs are costing, but they are often more difficult to um, uh, to manufacture. If I put it that way, and this uh, this small peptide, uh, we are still in such early development. So the scale-up process, we have initiated some steps towards that. Maybe you use, you've heard of that. I mentioned it before because it is important to ensure that we have a low cost of goods. Um, and in particular, if you think of the safety profile, a potential could be to combine with other drugs moving forward. And then, um, then it is important that they always that the cost of goods is as low as possible. So we take initial steps for that. Mm. 